Hi, Pranjal. Um, I'm really excited for this interview and I hope you are as well. How are you doing? Hello. Yeah, I am surely excited. I'm doing good. Lovely. So, um, he hello everyone. Hi, audience. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. This is Kashish Lewis here, your host. And today we have an interview scheduled with a very young, a dynamic author. Uh, we have Pranjal Varma here, who is the author of case number 107. And I'm really excited to listen to her um, talk about her book. We'll get to know a little bit of the inside scoop about her story, how she became an author, how she decided to get into writing. And uh, we hope that you'll stay and watch this video right until the end. So Pranjal, um, I'm really excited to talk to you mainly because it's really exciting to read such a wonderful story written by a very young author. And I'm sure that a lot of the audience is mainly questioning um, how you decided to get into writing at such a young age. And when was the first time you wrote as a kid? Okay, so with me, like writing wasn't even my thing back then. The first time I wrote was, you know, like our Hindi teacher was having a creative workshop in the lockdown and then we were asked to write a Hindi poem. And then that was the first time I wrote something and you know so that is how it all started so I started with poems and then short stories and then this that is lovely so how old were you when you started writing and how old are you now I guess I was around 9 or 10 and now I'm 14 that's amazing so um, coming up with such a wonderful story especially a murder mystery and um, stepping into the writing field how does it feel like to get into writing um, do you think that it's a good choice and a good decision that you've made yes i think like it's a really wise decision i made because you know i feel that when you write you are able to express yourself and went out and that pain when it turns into art it just it's amazing and i feel the happiest when i have a pen in my hand and i'm writing down something because i know that it is going to be something great and it's just an amazing feeling that's amazing i remember when i started writing out uh, for the first time as well something similar in school we had an assignment uh, prior to that, writing sort of felt like such a big thing for me because, um, you know, writers were really glorified and respected and it was such a respectable job um, getting into literature. So even when I was a kid, I just randomly in class, somebody asked me, the teacher asked, what do you want to be? And I just wanted to say something different than doctor, engineer or otherwise. And I just said, writer, copying my best friend. And I don't know how it just turned out to be true for me as well. Uh, in the coming days when I got into high school, I also turned out to be a writer pretty much similarly, um, you know, through an assignment, a creative assignment that my teacher gave us in English class. So I, I think we should definitely be thankful to the school system. Uh, if not for anything else, at least they did make us writers, <laughs> isn't it? Yes. <laughs> right. So um, talking about your book, how did you choose to write a murder mystery story? That is um, not, not a genre that a lot of writers choose on their first time. They you know, usually try to switch to a more easier genre like fiction or you know, poetry and um, sort of you know, stay within their comfort zone. So was murder mystery to you a comfort zone or was it some new venture that you wanted to try out? Actually, for me, murder mysteries, crime fiction, thriller, they are something really exciting. So for me, like, I have grown up watching CIDs and all the crime shows that exist. And I still do watch them because I have this craze for, you know, crime documentaries and shows, that mystery they have. So I also read thrillers and crime fiction books. It, for it for me it was like i wanted something new or 
sometimes it was something missing that i was thinking that like when you predict now when you read a book and sometimes it's like you predict something and when you actually read it further you were like okay it was not going on that way then i thought that i could do something like that if the other stories are not my way i could create something like that so back then it was really a faded idea and even i co- you know i could call it a stupid idea because i thought <laughs> like okay that is something pretty difficult and you are just into reading and you don't write really well but still like cid has been an inspiration and my favorite show so it's just that that hooked me to this genre and i really love mystery fiction so it's That's something amazing. Bad. um i unbelievably uh, unbelievably i can relate to you so much right now mainly because i grew up watching cid um not a lot of crime crime patrol but majorly cid because there was a lot of um fictional story that was involved and there was a lot of interesting characters that you could get hooked on to um and also i did grow up um, you know reading sherlock holmes and nancy drew and things like that which got me to start the mystery as well and it's one of my favorite uh, genres to read even today and I, that is one of the reasons i absolutely love the fact that you chose to write uh, you know write a mystery book and a murder mystery especially and i absolutely enjoyed reading your book it was very you know not until recently i did get a chance to finish the book but um the 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 one thing that captivates captivates me a lot about your book is the characters and especially how you open the book initially they're just sitting around having a chit chat and people are thinking maybe this is just going to be a group of friends hanging out and then the second scene shows that they are high profile investigators and um, you know detectives which was a quite an interesting uh, switch immediately it was not that much of a plot twist i would say but rather a, a very intriguing way of hopping uh, from one chapter to the other and i see that consistently throughout the entire book so tell me a little bit about these characters priya dev um lakshman and hina tell me a little bit about them how did you come up with them these characters are really really close to my heart especially the female ones you know because i have always you know i believe in teamwork and i think that instead of creating some characters which are actually pretty much serious all the way or you know like uh, in general we see the employees they are just work to work connections so i felt that i could create a family and something good could come out of this characters just you know they were something i had in my mind that i had to create a strong female leads so that was the motive with hina and priya i really really loved them i always saw myself in hina so like what would i do if i was in cid i have fantasized working with acp pradyuman <laughs> the most loved character and i just had to think a lot about the characters because i had to make them special there was something or the other about the character which actually connects with the readers so i wanted that i would say that uh, you've successfully done that because both of the female characters are really really captivating and uh, i would also say quite progressive uh, the way that you portrayed the characters is not just a typical woman you know uh working and uh, uh you know the usual stereotypes that we do read in the books that is not that evident and i I'm, i'm really happy that um uh, to see that in the young crowd and to see such books being generated by aspiring authors and aspiring writers uh, also talking about these four characters uh that you laid down so beautifully and i see that the bond that you've tried to um portray is very very well portrayed in the book uh, throughout the entire book even right until the end you can feel the connections that all of the writers uh, all of the characters have amidst each other talking about these four characters in specific if you had to describe them in one word what would you give uh, what is that one word you would use to describe priya hena you know lakshman and uh, the other one dev yeah okay 
So Hina is the lead character. She is my personal favorite. I love just creating her. And Dev is quite supportive. Lakshman is determined and Priya she is focused. So that's something I would like to describe in a one word about all the characters. Because again like if I had to talk about each character in general I could actually talk a lot. Mm. But still even when we are talking about a word so that is something that suits them best. Mm. Absolutely. Um Priya is very focused and um I can see that very very clearly in the way that she carries the investigation through and the way that she's even conversing with each of the characters that she encounters throughout the story. So tell me a little bit about the storyline and the plot line. Maybe just give us give us an overview for the audience here. Sure. So case number 107 we have our investigators and detectives and they are through a case which is quite confusing for them because as they think that they have gotten to a point or the case is almost over but it is not as someone a piece of the picture who is a stranger to everyone and the case it's just it just turns a bit so it is pretty intriguing if i would say and yeah it's good to go amazing i love how the story does not stop um at any particular point of time it's it's very continuous every chapter that i was reading kept me wanting to read the next chapter i really did not want to put the book down um it took me i was binge reading on the book uh, when i was in a, at a cafe last week and it's my favorite spot to read books i usually go there when i have an interview to prepare for or a, a book to read and it's one of my favorite spots and i did not want to get up um i left when the cafe was closing and that is when i i just came back home with so many dozens of thoughts with how the book is going to end and it did not end that way i did not expect the ending to be uh you know it it was vague but still so so peculiar and so so um you know specific about the way it ended so how did you come up with the climax and uh, do you think that would also give an opening for a sequel yes it yeah i mean it i can actually write a sequel to this it has an opening to it so climax was particularly like that so it was a point where i thought that this story is over so i'm finished with this now i'll just move on to editing this so the climax was a really sudden thought so it was like i'm sleeping and i'm thinking and i have an idea about the climax and i was like okay i wrote the whole book and now at the very last moment it has a climax <laughs> so i just rejected that idea that day itself but when i gave it a thought it really felt like something great because i am a lover of climaxes so it's just that it is pretty interesting for me and as i mentioned that i am a huge fan of crime fiction and thrillers so climax always gives me chills and when it's something unexpected the readers won't be expecting that then you come up with something so it's just Absolutely. good i agree and you definitely did justice to the climax i do believe i don't want to give away a lot to it but it sure is such a interesting one um as like i said when i was reading through the chapters it seemed so continuous that i felt like the end is going to be obvious but it did not and it's a very interesting read to see how the characters also develop uh to be honest throughout the book i see the characters grow i see the characters transform into different people by the end of the book and it's an amazing a uh, journey as a reader to go through that so now uh just a little away from your book though as a writer um at at the age of 13 and 14 there must be a lot of criticism that you must have faced or some sort of barriers or 
some sort of um, self questioning. So tell me a little bit about that. At any point of time, did you face um, rejection or uh, criticism, or did anybody try to stop you from writing, or did you yourself um, think that I'm too young to write? Actually. Yeah, it has two answers, yes and no. I will start with yes. So once it was like, I mean, when I had the idea itself, I was like, who is going to write a whole book? It's just so time taking and we really have to work hard. You know, because we have an image of writers, of being uh, so respected and their works are just amazing. So I've read some great thrillers and psychological thrillers. So for me, it was like, I can't write something like this. It's just not my cup of tea. And but then, you know, I started writing this in lockdown. So I was, you know, pretty idle back then. I just picked up the paper and I was like, okay, let's see how this would go. So at some point of time, I felt stuck because sometimes I had writer's block. And after that, I knew, okay, this particular thing was known as writer's block. Mm. And sometimes it was self questioning, okay, who would read this? or where would this go why am i even writing this but on the other hand i had this thing that there's no age to do something like you can do anything and you know it doesn't really have to um, mean anything with your age it doesn't really make sense to me at least so i am i think from two sides so one is like questioning one and i have a motivator in me in <laughs> itself so it's just that i knew that i had to go and i don't really think that i told anybody back then that i was writing a book after i wrote it i was like yeah i told my peers and some uh, you know someone was like okay what do you think or where do you think it would go and i didn't really have an answer because my job back then was just to write the book just to um mold my thoughts into a whole story hmm. and yeah it's been good i have faced rejection like the first draft was rejected by a publishing house but i was like okay i am it just happens, you know, you have to start somewhere, obviously, at, you know, an initial stage, obviously, you are a first time author, no one would select you as such. So, there will be people who will accept it, there will be people who will question it as well, you will face rejections, you will have people complimenting you, but again, you have to do what you are going to. So, there was no such barrier, but yeah, some points, I felt stuck or confused, but again, that just came over by do it. Anyway, do it. I must say that I'm really proud of you and the way that you continued your writing journey, uh, despite the questions that came across your mind. And as a young writer, I'm pretty sure um, that uh, these questions keep coming back all the time, no matter how much you push them away. And even not just as a young writer, but, but as a writer who's very, very new to the industry, irrespective of, of the age. Um, it happens because you grow up reading amazing stories, Sidney Sheldon, Nancy Drew, people like these. You have certain expectations and we constantly try to put ourselves there and try to compare ourselves with them. And I can relate to um, you know what you must have gone through. I must say that I'm really, really happy that uh, you decided to finish the book well and you uh, continue to to write your story down and publish it and i'm really glad that ink feathers had the opportunity to publish a young author like you um also now moving on to your peers you mentioned that you did take the book um and tell them later on that you wrote the book what about their response at reading the first draft did you share the first draft of the book with any best friend or sisters or your family Anybody who read the first draft of the book, what did they have to say? Okay, so not with friends or, you know, siblings or cousins. I didn't share first draft. So with me, I had this, uh, like, very faded sort of knowledge 
that you have to edit you know like at least twice or thrice and then you know you get new ideas you correct your own errors and you can mold it you can have something new or how you can add climax and all so i really didn't uh, show anyone the first draft but after you know i edited it multiple times then it was like yeah obviously like my family members knew i was writing something i was up to something so it was like late nights for me that i'm editing it uh past till 3 am so it was just so so i was so excited about this and then i showed them okay this is something i wrote and then again no i edited again and again so it was like you know i am a kind of a perfectionist i wanted perfect but still like there uh, was like okay it it is pretty good and this interesting and mm-hmm. criticism yeah i got constructive criticism which has helped to grow like how can i correct some english sentences or mold some characters but it is it was really good that is amazing how you uh, took that feedback well and it's um quite visible in the book about how much you must have taken time to edit it because it's really perfect i could say that um it's quite near perfect and the way that all of the uh, characters fall in place the simplicity of the language um it's not too complicated for anybody to understand it's not too easy to make it boring it's perfect i would say the amount of balance that you have you know the goldilock effect is very visible in your writing uh where there is you know it's not too hot not too cold it's just the right amount of temperature for, for the readers uh, to enjoy the book um how did you feel when you got the first copy in your hand um i mean i i can imagine the kind of feelings and emotions that you must have gone through throughout the writing journey how, but how did you feel when the book was finally picked up and published and you had the copy in your hands i was so excited like when i knew that i am getting the first copy on this particular date and it is actually you know getting published so i was excited and you know on seventh in seventh heaven throughout the process so it was pretty good and when i got the first copy i was like i had to i mean okay this is written by me this piece is written by me i have to put this on my shelf again it just it feels so good i wrote something the real i wrote a whole book you. yeah the realization hits you pretty hard that uh, finally you booked it out and it's published and it's printed what do you have to say about the cover design i for one love it um i i really like how it gives a very interesting inside to the book and it pretty much sums up the entire vibe of the book but um as an author from your end what do you think about the cover design and uh, what were your thoughts on it i really really love the cover so i mean as a reader itself so i was pretty excited about the cover and whenever i see the book it's just so so beautiful it's pranjal i i lost you a little bit pranjal sorry i lost you in the middle i was frozen for a while can actually, we actually you know it was something with my connection oh is it okay okay yeah. can we can we get back to the question so uh, tell me a little bit about the cover design How, what, what what were your thoughts on it when you first saw it so, it was really beautiful for me i was just amazed the team designed it really really well so as a reader also i was hooked to the book okay it's just it resembles the whole idea that it is a crime fiction and something interviewing something interesting something that will hook you so it's really great 
it's really positive to see writers um, going back, reading their work and being happy with it. It's not very uh, often that we get to see writers appreciate the effort, the hard work that they put in their own book. And I'm really, uh, to be honest, I'm very, very happy to see you so positive about your book, um, so positive about your work. So what do you think about the future when it, when it comes to writing? Do you think you're going to continue um, in the writing industry? Do you want to try a different genre or are you going to continue to write murder mysteries? I want to experiment a lot. So I'm not a person who will stick to something. So it's just like I have to experiment. I love to have multiple hobbies and I love to learn new things, to try new things. So I think that I will be experimenting in the poetry genre because I love poetry and I love reading it, I love writing it. So I think that next one could be poetry or it could it could be murder mystery as well. I mean, something good, something thrilling. Um, I really can't, uh, you know, assure that, okay, it, it would be some murder mystery or some contemporary fiction or poetry. But yeah, it would be great, the next one. I'm excited to see what your next book is going to be about. Um, since that you're telling me that you're going to be experimenting with it, I love experiments. I love reading uh, books that come out from new, different genres, different authors. And that is one of the reasons I really enjoy reading self-published books is because you get a window to these new authors that haven't even really stepped out into the market. And there's so much potential. There's so much good content that they're able to generate. And I'm, um, I'm really, really, um, uh, you know, I feel so, so contented when I pick up a book that hasn't even been famous back then and then when i read it i finish it and a couple of years later i see it on the bestsellers list i feel so happy for the authors who progressed um and feel so happy for the uh, authors that have not stopped writing and um, also tell us a little bit about social media presence are you there anywhere on social media where the audience can follow you um, is there any page or anything to leave the audience with Yes, I am on only one platform, which is Instagram. So I have two accounts. One is the art one. Like I have different personalities for different people. So I love experimenting and love trying new things. So I am an kind of an artist as well. So one is the art one, artist, and one where you will find my write-ups and would be able to connect more with, which is I overthink. All right, that's amazing. We'll leave uh, Pranjal Verma's uh, social media handles in the description. You can go find her on Instagram and follow her to keep updated with her work. Also Pranjal, before we part, and it was an amazing couple of minutes that I share with you. Um, really amazing to listen to how you came up with the story, a little bit about the characters as well. What would you have to say to any of the authors who are new to the industry um, as a young teen would you encourage the other teens and um, other other young adults as well to venture into the world of writing? And is there any message that you would like to leave them with? Yes, I would say that there will be moments that I had where I doubted myself. And I would just say that please don't stop. You know, sometimes when you are feeling low, there will be self-doubt at its peak. And you, you know, there you won't be willing to actually finish the piece you're working on or something like okay who's gonna read it no one's gonna read it but no you actually have an audience out there who loves you know different different genres and all so just trust yourself trust the process go with the flow and yeah please don't give up i mean you will be proud of yourself when you have your peace in your hands, something that is created by you, your creation and it still gives me chills that okay I have written something I couldn't couldn't even imagine myself writing so once this was a dream I wanted I wanted to do something irrespective of my age and you know I would really say that age doesn't really matter for me it's always been a slogan I follow 
so i want to try out different things i want to experiment and age shouldn't be a barrier to do anything thank you so much pranjal i'm pretty sure that's a very strong and very effective message for the listeners um we often quickly we are very quick to judge young people especially young writers uh people who voice out young people who voice out and young people who take a stand for themselves we are very quick to judge them um i'd also like to share that there are lots of people out there who are who are willing to share stories or willing to share their journeys all we have to do is just listen and it will be unbelievable the number of stories that are going to come up the number of authors that are going to be there uh, telling their stories out there to the world um in in different ways so let's keep an eye out for young people let's keep um our ears open listening and waiting for stories like this to come up thank you so much pranjal for your time audience you can check the description for uh, further information on where you can connect with pranjal stay tuned for the next coming uh, interview with another author at another day thank you so much